It was not surprising, but it was shocking and galling. Donald Trump, the businessman turned American president, took pride, reveled in taking full advantage of the government for his own financial gain. That detail from Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, was yet another in a series of revelations about Trump's tax-paying habits that have come to light in recent years, including the mammoth piece of reporting, body of reporting by the New York Times starting in 2020 that exposed Trump's chronic losses and years of tax avoidance. But today, an inflection point, a day that never seemed like it would come. After years of attempting to keep his tax returns private, Donald Trump's returns have been made public. Six years of them, from 2015 to 20, showing that he paid little in taxes before and during his presidency, and that he reported no charitable contributions in 2020. The public release of these returns follows a years-long court battle by the House Ways and Means Committee. Here's committee member Lloyd Doggett, a Democrat from Texas, on what, in his view, was uncovered. Here is the most powerful man in the world, the self-described clever genius uh, who uh, brags of his wealth almost daily, and he did not pay the taxes that the most modest wage earner in this country would pay. Nothing in one year, $750 a year and others. All of this related to the claims for big losses, big deductions, big credits, taking advantage of every loophole. And because of the sorry job that Trump's Internal Revenue Service did, we don't know if how many of these were legal loopholes for the rich and how many of them were unjust and illegal because the IRS didn't do the job of auditing. I think uh, Americans should be uh, greatly outraged. Now, as the public continues to sift through these never-before-seen tax returns, it's hard to forget this other message that Michael Cohen has shared with us. Here's what he said back on this show just a few months ago about his former boss. Let's stop the nonsense. Let's go after the low-hanging fruit, the Al Capone theory. We already know he tax evaded. Enough. Why are we worrying about this? Don't worry about murder, racketeering, extortion, as they did with Capone. Get him on tax evasion. Let's put this menace, right, this Mandarin Mussolini menace behind bars, which is where he belongs. And that is where we begin the hour. Joining us now, the aforementioned former Trump attorney, Michael Cohen. He's the host of the Mea Culpa podcast, and he is the author of the important new book, Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. David Farenthold is also here, a New York Times investigative reporter and an MSNBC contributor. He won a Pulitzer Prize while reporting at The Washington Post for his coverage of Trump's charitable giving or lack thereof. Uh, Michael Cohen, to you first. Well, I can't believe I said that on your show, uh, but it turned out once again to be true. I seem to have been accurate again. Um, I think that Donald has, as you appropriately put it, I think Donald's time uh, has come. And I think that there will be, he will have to reconcile with all of the things that he has done as it relates to his tax returns now that they have been exposed and now that they have been given to the public. Let's put a pin in the political piece, because I I think it's just jaw-dropping that his entire political identity was a hoax. He's, you know, in the words of of some of the reporters that have been on here, I mean, it was all basically a lie. Let's deal with the legal implications. You heard the congressman there talk about um, potentially illegal conduct. Michael Cohn, your lawyer, what, what laws may he have broken? (laughs) <laughs> well, first of all, I was a lawyer until I got involved now with Donald. Uh, that's a whole nother story. What laws did he break? We don't know. And to be honest with you, I don't think that his response was 100 percent accurate, maybe even 50 percent accurate. And I say that because if there are loopholes that benefit the wealthy, the uber rich in this case, that doesn't mean that it's illegal or improper for Donald to take. The real question here that we now have access to his tax returns, which he so vehemently fought in order to protect, is we now know the truth about Donald. We know that, first and foremost, he's not as rich as he claimed during all those years. Okay, that's just one in a basket of lies. But what it also does is it proves what I had said at the time of my House Oversight Committee hearing that he inflates his assets for his net worth 
for his personal financial statement so that he can get benefits, whether it's on loans, whether it's with insurance, whether it was uh, trying to get a deal like the old post office or the Doral or any of the other acquisitions that he did. He takes the same assets and he devalues them for tax purposes. That's illegal in and of itself right there. And that's what I was referring to when I was on your show and we talked about his triplex apartment, which is not 33,000 square feet and over 300 million. It's 11,000 square feet and the price per square foot that he was referencing in the personal financial statement is completely overinflated. These were done with intent. And again, as I expressed, the intent was solely to keep himself high up on that Forbes list, which was incredibly important to him. But more than that, it was to be able to use the personal financial statement so that he could benefit from that as well. Michael, what do you think drove Trump to fight so hard and to use his own Treasury Department? And we don't know what we don't know about what pressure he may have placed on the IRS as well to shield these returns from public view. Was it not wanting people to see how often he failed in business or was it not wanting people to see how little he paid in taxes or are they inextricably linked? I mean, what was he hiding? Everything, right? I mean, everything <laughs> across the board and then some. One of the things, of course, again, is the fact that he's not as wealthy as he purported. But also, he's clearly not as charitable as he wanted to purport. And then on top of everything, the way that he used the system, for example, and I'm sure David could speak to this at length, but one of the things that he would do is he would take worthless land at the back of some of the golf courses, and he would then donate it as a deduction. The problem is that he would take that piece of property and he would value it the same as usable property, despite the fact that this property was marshland, it was underwater. And he would then take that property, deduct it, and, you know, just not a proper deduction. And that's how he ended up, again, with that $10 million check plus a whole lot more over the years. Is that illegal? Proper. And, you know, to be honest with you, there's a lot of people that will have to answer, including the people from the state who ended up accepting it and not challenging when he donated, for yeah. example, 10 acres, claimed each one of those acres was worth a million dollars. Why they just fell for whatever it was that Trump and Weisselberg and others said, I truly don't know the answer. But it, th again, what it goes to is failures in our system of checks and balances, especially on the uber rich. There's a failure of checks and balances. And while he is responsible for that, because he put that down in the tax returns and so on, I think there are other people that need to be held accountable as well. David, I want to give you sort of a, a two-part question here and then, and then let you go. I mean, one, what sticks out for you in, in terms of your first look, these just came out this morning, and two, wh where you think the new buckets of, of questions are after seeing this today? Well, I'll tell you two things that stand out. The first one was, uh, you remember Trump, before he took office, said he would donate all his presidential salary. He doesn't need the money. The very common <laughs> thing he had done with uh, donations his entire life. He'd always said, oh, I'm doing this new thing, but I don't need the money. I'm going to donate it. And what we had found before he took office was that he often didn't live up to those promises. And what we see in these returns is apparently that he didn't do it again. His promise to donate his presidential salary seems to have petered out in 2020, the last year of his presidency. We see no donations, no no donations to, of his salary or anything else, zero in donations. That's one thing. The other thing, and I'm sure uh, Michael was unsurprised by this, was we spent all this time talking about Trump the businessman. What is he doing? This He has this genius. What are his plans? I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what his different businesses were doing. And come to find out, the only really success he had during his four years as president was due to his father, Fred Trump. The one good mm. year he had, according to these tax returns, was when he sold some of the last pieces of Fred Trump, who was by then had been long dead, of Fred Trump's real estate empire. All the things mm -hmm. we wrote about, all the big developments, those lost money. Fred Trump from the grave was the only person who helped Donald Trump's empire this entire time. I mean, Michael Cohen, does that explain the fervor to keep this secret, that he was not good at business? 
Yeah, and to, just to add to David, one of the other uh, successful ventures that he's part of is a venture with Vornado that he doesn't even control. They control it, and they're really professional. And so when they refinanced, he had his percentage. And that, of course, all goes from what occurred on the West Side Highway when he took over that property. But there are so many things that are coming out right now. The volume of information that's coming out, it's so, it's so enormous that it's going to yeah. take some time to digest. One of the things that we all had seen as well is the way that they manipulated the numbers, for example, with his aircrafts under, for example, the company is called TAG, T-A-G, Trump Aviation Group. But the way that Donald Trump would set up these companies is that TAG would have sub-entities underneath them. So one would be, for example, his trust, and the other would be another incorporated LLC that they would use as an additional layer of protection. If you notice, it claimed, for example, that he had earned $860,000 for the use of the plane, but the expenses equaled exactly eight hundred and six, or whatever the exact number was. That's extremely curious, especially if you're a forensic accountant or now the IRS. But the same thing happened with the helicopters. And again, it's the same way that they established the companies, the big LLC, then the sub LLCs. And it's also, again, difficult for the IRS to track what's going on here. Well, now they have plenty of time and there's going to be plenty of people taking a look at all of these documents. And my feeling is, is his goose is cooked.